meeting again towards the end of summer when it's not so uh, high up in the uh, attic. Reports from boards, ARB. I was actually doing this now. It's usually the first Thursday of the month at 7 o'clock at Village Hall. Planning Commission. On the uh, May 21st at uh, 7 o'clock, Village Hall. Zone, Board of Zoning and Appeals. Now being scheduled. Western Reserve Fire District. Um, the Western Reserve Fire District will have their monthly meeting on um, Wednesday, May 14th at 7.30. We are changing our location from the Township Building to our new... Um, Fire station annex at the uh, 92. number 92 on State Route 170 at 7:30. Yeah. I'll give everybody a copy of the minutes. I don't have here. Forest board, anything going on with them? Meeting? I gave everybody a copy of the. What's your next meeting now? I don't know. Okay. It was on there. I didn't bring it. How about High Memorial? What is it? May 21st. May 21st. 3 o'clock. Report from the mayor. Not everything I'm writing. Uh, the April court report has been processed. Uh, April Violations Bureau account has been balanced. And a, a couple of people I've seen in the area have asked me about the uh, gate in the woods. It is open. People want to go down and drive down and see the funerals and stuff like that. They open that uh, Monday, I'll say. So that is open. That's all I have. Motion to accept the mayor's report. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, report from fiscal officer. Okay, I'm circulating around a list of bills to be paid. Um, you will notice on this. There is six thousand five hundred and ninety dollars going to the U.S. Uh, uh, Marshals. Um, I know that we discussed the Silverado vehicle at a cost of five thousand dollars. I think that um, Russ will be going over the additional thousand five hundred dollars because it's for like um, storage and stuff like that. But this full amount, from the way that I understand it, will be fully reimbursed. So, is this a judgment? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, also, the 2012-2013 um, the, the audit of the village, the financial audit, has begun as of yesterday. Uh, preliminarily, probably uh, three to four weeks, and it should be finished. Um, the elder of Ag and Turf sent us another invoice for the high front tractor repairs, $286.69. We discussed that with Russ. He's going to go back down again and get a hold of them and uh, get this uh, you know, ironed out. Um, and a report. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anything from Deputy Clerk? So the administrator's not here, so that's the best part of that. So uh, all right. Well, I did look at the um, ordinance that Linda had given me uh, regarding um, the motor vehicle tax. And I think it's fine. I just have one change to it. I make sure that the sections were correct. 45, so 4172. Instead of saying additional, just leave it as revenue as needed. Okay. And then specify including improving and maintaining the public roads. Okay. Other than that, then getting $5 is ready to go. Great. Right. Thank you. Uh, I did look at this a little bit, the ordinance that Mr. Saling um, brought. And I do want more time if I could to study it. Um, it does allow for a change if there are any problems with um, Aqua High that you need to increase this. And I'm not sure how that would, would work. Could you help me with that part of it? Yeah. Uh, sir, we, we have that standard. What we would want would be, God forbid, so like if the EPA would come in and say, you have to restructure your uh, your treatment plant, it's going to cost you another $12 million. But that's been, that's been standard language in there for the past 30 years. We've never used it, and we, would, we wouldn't intend on using it. Okay. That would just be if there was a disaster. And that's that's where my job is to look out for this thing. Is, um, <laughs> yeah. Help it. Uh, I mean, the other part of it that I just had a question about 
with Section 10 that the ordinances concerning rates uh, that were provided earlier are repealed. So does, if council passes this, does that mean that the rates that they had agreed to prior are going to go up? Or does it, or does it just keep them? Because it said 4.95 for 13, 14, 15, and 16. It didn't seem like it went up. But I didn't know why that language would be there then. The only reason was was because that the ordinance for 12, 13, and 14 is going to go away. This is going to this is going to uh, enact 15 and 16. Okay. And I mean, you know, if you want to wordsmith that some other way that would mean the same thing, you know, we don't have a problem with that. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand um, so that I could advise council if there was an increase that they were authorizing by passing the ordinance. I didn't think there was, but I wanted to make sure that there was. No, 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 no. And, and also, you should have the old ordinance, but not off the right one, so that you can see there's no fuzzy math in the in the sections. And I will say that what is in this ordinance, which I'm, I'm sure is in the contract, is exactly as it is on the form you gave us. Right. Know? The only thing I did on the two tables, we multiplied just those two tables by 4.95%. The rest of the fixed fees and the tap-in fees, everything stayed the same. You can compare those. Yeah, and I went through it just quickly, and I, I looked at even things like dishonored payments, reconnection fees, exactly as is stated in the ordinance, as I see Mr. Sanders presenting us tonight to review it. So I felt comforted about that. Uh, we did meet tonight with um, Mr. Gowski from uh, the village about a bicycle in the law. And we have one right now in the village that I think is at least uh, outdated and maybe illegal at different points. So I'm going to advise council to repeal the ordinance concerning bicycle laws right now and then to consider whether or not you want to enact the state statute as your own ordinance or if you want to keep the state statute as the law as you go forward. Um, that's something you can think about. But for now, since we know that some of the ordinance is illegal about riding on the sidewalk and different things like that, I think for liability, the council should move maybe at the next meeting to enact an ordinance repealing 4 4 0 um, in its entirety. I think it's 4 4 0. 4 4 0. I'm sorry, 4 4 4. And what is the new uh, state statute? Is it, is it well, the, the new state statute is 4511. 4511 is huge and it encompasses everything in Ohio that is a moving vehicle, yeah. including cars, trucks bicycles, motorcycles, snowmobiles, and in its entirety, found within its entirety, yeah. are sections dealing with bicycles. Yeah. I'm pretty confident, although I didn't go through with the contour yeah. comb, that anything that the village ordinance has uh, concerning bicycles can be found in the state statute. And I will make sure of that before we come back here. But that is what everyone else uses right. to govern bicycles in their towns and villages. The only downside if you will, and I don't think it is because obviously we haven't used it. But if there is a if there's a violation of the state ordinance, um, that money goes to the state. If there's a violation of the village ordinance, which is the state statute, the village ordinance, the money goes to the village. But I'm going to guess that there hasn't been one time in the last oh many years that the village ordinance concerning bicycles was cited and used and we got revenue from it. And the amount of money that you might spend in acting the village ordinance or adopting the state statute would probably equate or outweigh what you're going to garner from revenue. Absolutely. So, you know, I would say at the very least, I would recommend you repeal 444 and then decide as council as you move forward if you see that the officers are citing people under the statute that you want to have your own accompanying village ordinance. This is what the city of Youngstown has done in its entirety. They've taken the state statute and taken every part of it and adopted it to the to the Youngstown uh, ordinances so they keep all the money in their city. Because when I was a prosecutor down there, I was always told to make sure you cite under the city ordinance rather than state statute. That's the only thing you're going to lose. You're not losing much, if, if anything at all. Um, I think that's it. I don't think there's anything in there about riding a bicycle when you're campaigning, is there? <laughs> I'm looking it up now. Uh, uh, Remember those days? <laughs> the uh, Heiselstein and Barnheiser uh, situations, do you have any anything to share? Well, I haven't talked, I've spoken to Dave about it in a while. Um, you know, I haven't heard anything from any attorneys for Mr. Eisenstein or Mr. Barnheiser. 
So I have no information on that. Have you been over that way? On your little horse every day? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the rain and the mud is washing away. And it's, you know, sometimes I wonder if we shouldn't just go ahead and mitigate that nuisance ourselves and charge it to their, uh, uh, their property tax. I'll fill in the holes. You check into it. Uh, Bill, we're talking some serious money here. If, yeah, and they would pay for it. Uh, he, he's not paying to get, get the place built. Well, he don't have any money. But that's a mess. Yeah, no. I guess we really I'll look. Um, I don't remember if village, if the village has the power to approve the nuisance on its own, and then because I know, for instance, um, we were talking about the trees, and the village has the power. If there's a public safety issue, you know, to cut down a tree and then to charge the homeowner. And of course, we've done that now. Um, I don't remember that there's anything in the ordinance or in state statute that says you can uh, you can clean up uh, an abated property. Or, or property with a nuisance and then go back and charge. Nor am I sure that you can go on property and, and affect it like that. I think a tree, in the, in the eyes of the law, is, is one thing, but a home is something different. And I've wanted to I, think, I, I think you can, just because I, I know I've seen many times other communities would uh, uh, declare a property nuisance. I just saw it in the paper, in the paper the other day, Mortimer Township. Three properties, nuisances for overgrown grass. They went and cut the grass, and they're going to charge their property tax and cost. Um, if that's typical, then. Well, yeah, and that, and that, you know, those two examples are pretty indicative of what the law of normal size is cosmetic. I mean, I think we're talking about going and doing something to foundations and to, and to a little more. I just want to make sure before I would tell you you can do this that I was, I checked it out. Okay, thanks. That's it. Motion approved the solicitor's report. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, report from the Chief of Police and Street Commissioner. Maybe when we had a magistrate, did we have any fines for um, our bike ordinance? Did we make any money on it? I, I don't remember. Probably never, huh? Not that I'm aware of. The thing we were definitely, definitely not worth keeping. Yeah, we, were, we were talking about repealing the, the village ordinance with bicycles yeah. because some of it's outdated and probably illegal. And then if we would replace it with the state statute and adopt it as an ordinance, yeah. would it be more money to enact it than, than the money we're losing, quote, losing yeah, it as it were. Yeah. And I, I, and my guess was we hadn't cited too many people for, for bicycle statutes. No, we're not more of. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Make a motion that we accept the uh, police report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, report from engineer. Well, a couple of things. When they're starting the sidewalk up on 170, and uh, they're going to make a, a roundabout at Sheridan Road and Matthews Road. Oh, okay. And that, that's going to start. Yep. That's it. Right. Yep. And the, the sanitary sewer in the woods, they haven't done anything yet. So I guess the weather's been... Yeah, hazardous one, I don't know. But everything else is okay. Except we got potholes all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Like mines. Yep. Motion to approve the engineer's report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, reports from outstanding committees of council finance, wage, audit, and insurance. Okay, I guess we should just start with everything in the order it's on the agenda. Um, so let's see here. The levy renewal. We have numbers from Anthony Magneta at the county. The actual difference between the village revenue for a renewal to bring in 176,020 as a replacement, 183,629. 
not much of a difference, $7,629. Um, finance met on Monday, we discussed this. Actually, we've had a couple of different meetings where we've talked about um, what's going to happen with this uh, largest levy that we have for revenue, actually. And since it was coming due at the end of this year, how we would go about approaching what we needed to do. And we decided that we're recommending that we do it as a renewal. Um, I don't know how many people are actually aware of the fact that the state made another change last year and that they have done away with the 12.5% rollback that was always given to homeowners before. So you're going to be seeing these things on your taxes. And it will only affect replacements and new levies. So any renewal is going to maintain that 12.5% reimbursement. Okay, and so what happens is it's discounted to the taxpayer on your taxes that you see, and the state would make it up to the village. They would make it whole for the village. The state is no longer going to pay any part of that. So it's going to be dumped on the taxpayer. So on those replacement levies that you see, or new levies, you're going to pay another 12.5% of you, you won't get that discount anymore on those taxes, which it's beyond me how these things are coming out of Columbus, and it's no wonder they have this wonderful rainy day fund. That's probably shouldn't even be saying that, but anyway, that's exactly how I feel. Um, anyway, our recommendation is that we go with a renewal at the same rate, 3.2 mils, um, and we will have 176,000 O2O on the revenue. On a $100,000 home, that equates to ninety-four oh eight. <coughs> Pardon me. For a year, or perhaps. These are annuals, yes. aren't they? Annuals. And we know that you know we're all very well aware of the fact that this budget and what what I thought originally last year was a pretty decent budget that you have a balanced budget and taking a closer look at those numbers, realize that what balanced your budget was actually that estate tax that came in, or it would have also been the deficit spending budget. So we've been pretty consistent with having deficit budgets. We're going to have one again this year. So every time we, we're doing this, we're dipping into STAR to cover the balance. And, and of course, we know that that won't last forever, because at this rate, going into it approximately $100,000 a year, it'll be gone in, in eight years. It'll be gone. And so we'll have nothing to um, cover a deficit spending budget. So. We are going to really have to think seriously about next year possibly doing something, um, but we didn't want to rush to do this and we don't want to ask the taxpayers uh, for anything more than we absolutely need to ask for. So for the time being, I'd like to see with some of the little changes that we've made this year how it's going to affect the budget and look at numbers very closely next year and get some ideas of how we can help keep the town on solid ground. Um, in order to move forward with this, I just have to be sure that everybody is on the same page with doing this as a renewal and not a replacement. Well, look at the history of yesterday's election. You know, renewals passed. Right. Some of you. Right. Well, right. most of them. Right. Renewals are. They, they seem to do better. Yeah. And there, it was probably because they went for a permanent. That were you know, probably is what, well, that and as well as the article that was in the newspaper, that was really pretty negative for them. And prevailing opinion, opinion is spring is not a good time for, for taxes in the end. Okay. So how do you, you feel? Wanna, do you want to yeah, show of hands or something? Or well, no, I mean, we're going to okay? do a, we're going to do a vote, of course, yeah, for all okay. the actual all right. ordinance for it. But is everybody okay on this? I mean, we have enough people who feel that yeah. way. We're going to go ahead and commit it to the county so that they'll certify it, and then we'll move forward on the three. We'll do three readings to give our residents a chance to come in and speak on it if they want to, mm -hmm. um, and we'll go forward with it. But we'll start. Okay. We'll start that with the first reading at the next meeting. Okay, so next we have the term tax. So you heard Anthony talk a little bit about this, and that's because um, I've been in touch with the state, Department of Taxation, and we've done some um, research on this, and we are, as a village, permitted to put on one more $5 permissive tax. Okay. And so we have all the paperwork in place that we need 
We're going to have an ordinance at the next meeting. We'll do three readings on this as well to give our taxpayers a chance to speak on it. Um, it's a relatively small amount of money, $5 on this, so you don't go through the same procedures because of that. You don't have to go through the same thing that you do for a regular tax levy. Okay, so we're, we're good to go. Of course, that money will go. One of the really good things that I like about this is that money goes directly to the street fund. Can't be used for anything but those particular purposes. So, um, and that is maintaining roads, and we certainly need money for that. So, we'll be ready to move on that um, at the next meeting. And we have a resolution tonight for the American Legion for Memorial Day. Um, parade, it's $100, the same as last year's donation. Um, and the resolution is to show proper public purpose. So we'll move on that tonight. Um, tonight we also have the second reading of the ordinance for the records retention schedule. Finance also looks is looking at the insurance uh, policies, which are coming due um, about March 24th. We will need to move on this at the May next 20. meeting. May 24th. 20, May 20, um, so we'll need to um, move forward with this at the meeting on, is it the 20th? Yes. The 20th we have yeah. meeting? Okay. And in so doing and reviewing these policies and what changes there were, um, we had a couple of things uh, that we went over with Weikert. Uh, it's actually going to be a slightly lower premium than what we had last year. It's just going to save about $160. Um, one of the things that we do need, though, on this bill, um, because we reviewed all of these uh, different things that are added onto the policy on extensions, they happen to list refreshment stands, um, which brought about conversation about Celebrate Poland. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we inquired about that to be sure on liability for that issue. And what we need from um, Celebrate Poland is their certificate of liability insurance um, for the village because our, uh, we're being advised not to indemnify anything. Um, that's across the board. I mean, that's, so it's just uh, simple, and I'm sure they probably have that in place anyway because of the fireworks. I'm assuming that they do a certificate uh, of liability insurance. Anthony, you okay with that? Have we done that before? I don't. I don't remember us. That. I don't recall. Dealing with that <coughs> certainly is not a bad idea. Um, I, I, you know, the issue about indemnification and liability. And unfortunately, as these things grow, you know, they become more get more parties involved, and you start thinking about things you hadn't thought of in the past, and you know, crossing lines between where power is going, those type of things, how power will be supplied. You've got the American Legion involved, you've got us, you've got the, the, the board um, to celebrate Poland. I think the more that you talk about these things and have open communication about, okay, are you covered, you know, have you done your homework, just so you can say that you did that and, and that we checked, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, I don't remember talking about it in the past, but I'm sure they have it. If they're going to shoot this fire off, I guarantee they have it's it. It's general business practice, practice to get a certificate of insurance if you yeah. want some stuff. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. tenants get it for the land or the ones in the building, so it's a common practice yeah. to protect yourself. Yeah, because if not, you're paying for it. Your insurance will be paying for it. Yeah, I'm checking it. Yeah, yeah Wiker said that they handle a lot of these, and this is what they're recommending to all of their customers, and said, this is how we go about it. We are looking at. Um, our renewal with the same two companies. Scottsdale and Demney will be the law enforcement um, area, and then Selective will be everything else. Yeah. So. I will tell you that my, my father had a, we had a case years ago where he got at the Pittsburgh Pirates team. The Pirates went off, and then they came down right on him. And he, you know, he, you look at all the different folks who could have been involved, the Pirates company, mm -hmm. the Pirates, the, the stadium. So you make sure that, that someone else is doing their part, because if not, then, then the village is liable. So, this is just a good practice. Okay. So, I think that covers everything we were going to do from finance. All set? Mm -hmm. I motion to accept this report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, legislation and Policy Committee. Uh, well, Tony, uh, 
kind of covered our uh, discussion about bikes, and uh, hopefully at the next meeting we'll have an ordinance, uh, both the town and the village's ordinance, and set this place provisions in the state ordinance with, with control. They control right now, actually, but this will at least eliminate our ordinance, which has some anomalies in it, which are not correct. So that's what we discussed with Frank Lugowski uh, at the beginning of the today. So that's about it with Joe and uh, Bill. Okay. Okay. Any motion to approve the legislation report? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, police and fire committee. Uh, nothing with police or fire. Street, sidewalks, and drainage. Well, we, we didn't have anything to discuss tonight about the purchasing any equipment, right? No, no. no. It's a very fun. Okay, a few things. Uh, speaking of indemnification from liability, uh, as you know, uh, we had asked the uh, school board to uh, give us approval for our power to um, to supply the property, the school property next door. Um, and that kind of went on and on through the winter. Uh, so I called uh, Mr. Janifay, the superintendent, and asked him to get on the, the, uh, the board agenda as soon as possible. And he had asked me that uh, for some sort of letter to indemnify the school from uh, from liability uh, from us. Uh, and there was a discussion amongst the uh, Blooper members, and we agreed that we should not do that. And I hope everybody else agrees with that as well. Um, and thinking along those lines, I went to um, uh, <coughs> the people who celebrate Poland, uh, Bob Lytle specifically, and. Um, told them that we were not going to indemnify the school uh, from, uh, from liability and that um, the service over there will not be supplying electricity to that property. Uh, so I clearly told them that all activities on that property need to be serviced from electricity to the school. Activities on this property can be serviced from that as well. And uh, he was okay with that. Uh, he understood, and uh, I guess it was a discussion uh, recently from Celebrate Poland. I, I think they understand, not happy, but and I, I totally they understand. So I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to get the, uh, Dickie Electric in here, who we used for the, uh, the electrical work this last Christmas, and I'm going to have them work on that to disconnect all everything that leads to the school property. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to make sure and check everything is to code. Because uh, we had that inspection, there were, there were problems. And while they're here, I'm going to have them work on the timer for the Christmas tree. And also, the garden club would like uh, to get a, an estimate for the uh, uh, for power to be run over the pergola. So I'm going to get an estimate for, an estimate for that. And um, the bridge. The bridge. The bridge. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to make sure it's power. The power is uh, active for the bridge for the north of that part. Uh, and uh, that's it as far as Celebrate Poland goes. Um, now there's also uh, a meeting with the Garden Club. There was an agreement that was signed last year, Kim, by you, do you recall this? Yes. about the water. Okay, we uh, I met with the Garden Club and uh, um, Keith Beatty, and we're going to proceed with providing them with the water they want over the part of the for, for this agreement signed last year. And um, that's it as far as blooper goes. Uh, might as well talk about this now, too. Uh, Paula uh, had a business person come in last week uh, and wanted to leave advertising here at the building. Village, village business. Um, yeah. And um, Paula told them that that's something that we never did in the past. That it's advertised for the businesses in Malton, Poland, and, uh, which she rightly did. Uh, they were a little upset about it, you know, you should be supporting the following businesses and so forth. So she contacted me, contacted you. Did, did you get any detail on what kind of advertising they wanted? It's like something they can put a regular handouts or whatever, talking okay. about what they do. Uh, but once you do that for one, you get your very Right. Paula kind of gave them her opinion that, that uh, she didn't think it was proper to do that, and I agreed with her. But uh, she asked me to bring it to council, and, and uh, 
see what you felt about it. Uh, I don't think it's proper for us to, to advertise for the businesses involved here because then we'd be inundated with posters, flyers, uh, and then there's going to be uh, accusations of preferential treatment and, and so forth. So um, I hope you agree with me. That I agree with you. I agree. Okay, I'll just start following that. They're welcome to come in and talk about what they do and promote it in front of the business council they want, but we're not going to be putting stuff yeah, up. we're not going to advertise for this. Well, let's see what Anthony thinks about that. I think this is a governmental building, you know, governmental property, and as much as you can act in your official capacity to support the businesses, advertising is probably not one of the ways you can do it, you know, by supporting them. So I, I think there's a there's a distinction you can make between what you can do as a council and what you can't do, and I think this is this falls right in line with it. But maybe be a little more diplomatic about you know how you explain that to them and how you handle it. I, I know Paul is very um, principled, and um, you know if you even wanted me to call him, I'd be happy. Or the mayor probably he's much more influential than I am. <laughs> But just to smooth it over a little bit, I and mean, just explain that you know we love to help businesses, and there's ways we can do it officially, advertising in our in our government buildings. Not one of them. Do you want to do yeah, that? I'll call that call that business person. Yeah. I, and I don't want to say go there. Yeah. Sure. So. Okay. Well, how's he going to call it? If you don't, you don't say go there. He knows. Yeah. You don't yeah. like yeah. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. So yeah. I know who it is. Twenty bucks a day. <laughs> Bill, anything on the farmers market? What they're doing? As far as I know. Not happening. Not happening. I guess they're lacking uh, individuals on streetscapes to, to to take the charge of that. Uh, there's the people that were doing it last year that found themselves doing different things. Okay. And there's issues with the location yeah. and the uh, mm -hmm. bonds of day and so forth. Okay. So Blooper though is waiving the um, fee for yes. solid break. As far as well, ground. Well, there is no fee because it's not a commercial uh, event. The, uh, uh, the, way it's set, the way it's set up is that if it's a commercial event, and Celebrate Poem is not a commercial event, okay, uh, they should not be charged for that. And that's the way it reads on the, on the form. And that's my responsibility to determine if it is, you know, what criteria each event follows. And it, it is not as a commercial event, so I'm not going to charge it. And the money that is made that Greg was talking about to council at the last meeting, as far as the vendors paying, um, actually all that money is reabsorbed in Celebrate Poland and used for fireworks, fireworks and, and um, expenses and, and expenses. that are needed. Correct. Um, something interesting that you might like to know, um, I talked to one of the officials at Lowville, and um, you know, as everybody knows, there's a huge Lowville festival. Mm -hmm. um, Curious to know who pays for the police. And the village of Lowville does not pay for the police. Mm -hmm. They are paid for by the entity that's sponsoring sponsoring it. Mm -hmm. um, and they used to at one time pay for the overtime by the police chief, but this year, starting this year, they're paying none of it. Mm -hmm. Something that we should think about, you know, because we went from one day to two days mm -hmm. and our cost doubled right there right. and um, you know because of all these issues that we're having with money and it's not getting better mm -hmm. um, we might have to think about some cutbacks in areas where where we're able yeah. to do that yeah that's, that's something to consider for next year it's a little yeah. late to do it right that on, uh, for this year's because their and budget their budget isn't set for that yeah. the use of the land and the electric bill and the electric bill and, right and, yeah um, i was a little surprised to hear bob lytle say that their contribution is three thousand dollars from the township, but it's money that they get from the landfill. Yes, yeah, so it's really. So not there's really budget. nothing out of their budget that goes mm -hmm. towards yeah. this. That would yeah. be like that would be like me taking Al's contribution to celebrate Poland and giving it to them and saying this is from the village. Right. <laughs> we, we wouldn't do that. Al. <laughs> and actually went through the fire board. Mm -hmm. It goes to the fire district too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I questioned okay. at the last meeting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Which you know, and I don't mean to sound like we don't want it here. I mean, because it's a great, it's a great event, and I think that the <coughs> residents really enjoy it. And I wish that we had a lot of money in this town, but we don't, right. and that's the problem. Yeah. We have the smallest budget of all the entities that are involved here, and it seems that we're the ones who are putting out the most money for it. So. And Celebrate <coughs> Poland has grown a lot. 
And it's my personal opinion. I think it's grown to a point where I'm not sure personally I want to see it grow much more. Especially in a residential Especially area. In a, yeah. I mean, I think it's a great event as it is, but um, I don't want this. I don't want to see this turn into a church festival mm -hmm. type of thing where it runs for a week and uh, um, just gets gets out of hand mm -hmm. for a little village like this. Mm -hmm. That's great. Any report? Motion to accept. Okay. All in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? A report from the board's planning commission. Um, didn't need that. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, board of zoning appeals. Uh, nothing to report. Architecture review board. board. Was canceled. That was canceled. Yeah, he was very sick last week. Oh, really? Yeah, his wife. Oh, I need one of the down to your house. Okay. <laughs> Forest board. Nothing. Uh, I gave everybody a copy of the last minute. Yes. High Memorial. Same. And West Reserve Fire District. Uh, nothing, Jeff. It passed out the. I have a uh, question about mm -hmm. the minutes. Under the legal counsel's report at the last meeting, April 23rd, there's an item that says oil slash gas lease dash report update. What is that? Uh, well, there was no report given. There's nothing new on it. They, what is it? What is it? Um, at one time, they were looking at um, leasing the North Northfield. Northfield property. What, Frank? Um, huh. For drilling, for uh, Frank right. leasing our land, yeah. For getting royalties right. and leasing mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Now, wouldn't that uh, kind of come more to the council? Like, would that would have to act on that as opposed to the. Nope. Township. Township. It's township property. But, is there a joint fire for but I mean, we're. We say joint, we're part of the joint, right? Don't we have yeah. to say that? that the, fire board, the fire board is its own governmental entity that collects taxes from the village and the township. Yeah, but we're, we own it, though. They we have, have a five-member five governing board that makes those decisions. But, but we have owners of it. You have three representatives on it. Hmm? You have three yeah, representatives. Yeah, so don't we have to say so? Do you three representatives do. I'm sure it be. The township has two. The next year, yeah. the township will have three, and the village will have two. Yeah, but and I mean, shouldn't that, I mean, fracking is such a hot issue, it would seem to me that it should come up to the council for consideration to at least the land. It's not a hot issue anymore. No. I mean, it's not a decision by this board. It's a decision well, it's not jurisdiction by the board. council over the fire board. But we own half of it. We don't own the board, no. We don't, we don't own the property. Own, we I, I believe you're property. represented on the board by over half of it as yeah. part of ownership of it. That's why it's joint chair between the township and the village. Right. And whoever's on it, like if you would be on it next year as one of the two, and then the uh, township would have three, you would have a say. But I think that that entity is its own governing body and I think that what they do is designed to be distinct from the township trustees and the village council. It's 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 its own entity combined or comprised of we, we I, I don't agree with that at all. I mean we, we have half ownership of the west of, of this five districts. Joint, right? We don't we have nothing of it. We have nothing of it. So what do we, we buy a fire truck or so, so what do we do? We don't have to come and ask you for anything. But so why 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 are we on it? It was a, it was called a joint resolution passed by the village council and the, and the township trustees back in eighty something I believe, which in, which gave the jurisdiction to the uh, the two bodies to provide representatives in alternate years with the majority of the township to it the village. It's shared as equally as it can right. be shared, which is rotation of the count of the members and the decisions made by that body then become that body's own. The idea being that well, at any given time, a majority of either the township or village does agree with what they're about to do, or they would vote it down. If, the, if there were three people, let's say, who opposed fracking on that board, then that lease wouldn't go. You know, I mean, it's, it's whatever the majority well, is. Who's on the Western Reserve? I am. I'm sure. Jeff is our I citizen. I shouldn't have it be an item that should come up to the council for us to no, take a look at. There's nothing it. going Absolutely on. Nothing for us. We, can't, we have no say in anything. We can't vote on anything. We can't. Uh, but our representatives can. They're just representatives. It's they're just they're like trustees to a board. But they're just observers. Uh, they're advisors. I would call them, they're basically advisors. Okay, we are like council of the fire board. A way to contrast it is the hind board, where you have two members of council. Three, I don't remember. Yeah, two, two, two. two. Um, the village has has a direct relationship or ownership of the of the forest. And council has an invested interest in deciding. <coughs> that's why two members are on that board. 
this is not that. This is something that is not owned by a council. It's an entity that is shared between the township and the village. And is, and is best, I imagine, that the folks that design the board try to share the responsibility and the, the power, if you will. It, and I understand what you're, what you're, what you're gathering, getting to, but the way to look at it would be to reverse it. That, like I said, if, if you were one of the three members from the village and two other members disagreed about, it, about fracking, and if the two members from the township wanted it, they wouldn't get it because that's the way the board set up. Mm -hmm. So it empowers whoever the majority is between the village and the township. Right. And right now, who's got the majority? We, we do. We do. But we have it only members, not... The board doesn't have to come back to council and, and, and get... Just like, let's say... But the, how about the council members? Should they come back? No, let's say... Let's say this the report's way. a courtesy. Yeah, let's say that you were the only member from, from the village, and there were three members only. One from the village, one from the township, and one local member from either side. And you didn't want to vote for fracking, but the village council wanted to. Would you have to vote for fracking? No. You would not. You would have your own vote. You would be you would be governed by the, the council. I guess that's what you put, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The district has its own they have its own um, tax base. They use the township and the village for their tax base with their own village and they have their own financial officer and all that. Yeah. But that doesn't make any difference. But uh, it just seems illogical to me, but I'll leave it as that. Anything else going on there? No. Second. Motion to approve the report of the fire district. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, reports from special committees. Communications from residents. Any new business? Your business. Motions, ordinances, and resolutions. Why should we take the resolution authorizing payment of one hundred dollars to the American Legion? Second. This is an emergency. Oh, so oh there's an emergency. Emergency. So a roll call. Yeah. 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 You don't have to so, do yeah. so you want to wait for your reading? Yes, wait for your reading and clear for your uh, Roll call. Yeah. Yeah. Was this the way of three readings? Yes. That we're the motion is to wait for three readings and adopt by emergency the resolution. Uh, roll call is Mr. Dunley. Yes. Attorney Lemon. Yes. Mr. Major. Yes. Mrs. Sermon. Yes. Mrs. Yash. Yes. yes. Okay, let, let's move. The resolution authorizing the payment of $100 to the American Legion. Okay. All in favor? Roll call. Roll Mr. Donovan? Yes. Attorney Lambert? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Mrs. Cernan? Yes. Mrs. Yash? Yes. yes. Uh, legislation adopted by the Yeah. All right. Any other motions, ordinances, or resolutions? Yes. Um, oh wait, that's the second reading. So no for that? That's the second reading, sorry. Second and third reading. Okay. A motion to send to a third reading an ordinance establishing the record retention schedule pursuant to a high revised code section 14939 for the village of Poland, County Mahoney, State of Ohio. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Please. All right. Uh, presentation of the bills. Chris, that's your job. Make a motion that the bills be paid. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Questions from the news media? Remarks by council. Linda. I do not have any remarks. Bob? No comments. Chris? Uh, nothing. Good. I'm anxious to see the sidewalk going in uh, on 170. How long is it going to take? A month or two? I don't know. They got a lot of work there. Yeah. Is any of our property, the first two houses on 170, get new sidewalks? I don't. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I think there is one property there to go to get them connected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then. yeah. Okay. Eight seventeen. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting at eight seventeen p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Meeting adjourned. Good job, Thank you. Uh,